The birth of quantum mechanics. A bit of history. This video will be an extremely int brief introduction on how quantum mechanics was first developed. We will introduce the history of how it came about and discuss three models of the atom that were proposed. We currently have evolved beyond all of these models, but it's interesting to see how our knowledge about the topic came to be. Before the era of Max Planck and the resulting studies of quantum mechanics, scientists treated atoms and molecules as simple rebounding balls. There were a few different theories about the actual structure of molecules that we'll discuss in a moment, but for the most part, calculations and theories were built as treating them as rebounding balls. We'll see that we can use this approximation even now for many applications, such as when we are looking at gases under certain conditions, which we'll come across later on in the course. The treatment of molecules as the simple rebounding balls works well in describing macroscopic properties, but it fails to explain many of the other interesting phenomena that were quickly becoming an integral part of science. Max Planck identified that atoms and molecules only emit energy from very particular wavelengths. Or in other words, that light coming from an atom could be of several, several select energies, but never in between. This meant that energy wasn't continuous, and it completely changed the world of physics. Here are three of the proposed atomic models that were suggested. The plum pudding model was suggested before the discovery of the nucleus, and it was thought that the whole atom could be made up of a positively charged jelly-like substance with suspended electrons inside of it. Rutherford used experimental evidence to develop a model with what we will eventually call a nucleus, but then was described as an area of small positive charge. Bohr developed this further thanks to the quantization discoveries that we discussed a minute ago to say that there were energy levels and that the electrons were within them orbiting the nucleus. The Bohr model works for many systems and we'll use it for a large portion of this chapter. You may recognize this as the model they teach in introductory classes in high school or earlier. However, with more than one electron, it can't accurately be used for calculations and it doesn't describe the complex bonding as well as more complicated, more correct models. So we're going to be moving on to these as the chapter progresses. Planck's description of quantum theory also helped to correctly model blackbody radiation. Blackbody radiation describes how light is emitted from an object and how that depends on its temperature. An object at room temperature doesn't appear to have any radiation to us because what it is emitting is mostly in the IR region and we can't see it. However, as the temperature increases, the color goes into the red region and higher up to a brilliant white blue that we can see. It was known that the wavelength or energy of the radiation was dependent on its temperature, but all attempts to dis explain this had fallen apart at either high or low ends of the spectrum. Planck's realization that molecules only emit at specified wavelengths changed this. We have now introduced the history of development of quantum mechanics and discussed three atomic models that were created in the development of the current model. In later podcasts, we'll go on to use this information and develop each area of it a bit more 